Hi everyone, so this video is going to be a watercolor tips video and it's going to be a live drawing sort of draw with me thing, a slower sort of video and I'm just going to watercolor this or paint this with watercolor and I'm going to just kind of like say some tips that I have about it as I go. I've never really been like taught watercolor, these are just kind of things I've picked up so, so it's kind of like my way of doing things, um, it's not the only way or the right way, it's just just some tips I have, and the first thing I want to say is um, I like to do an underdrawing first in either a color or um, in pencil, and then you can lighten your pencil drawing before you do the watercolor by taking one of those kneaded erasers and just rolling it over the image. I like to start with a really light sketch so that the sketch lines don't really interfere with the watercolor. And the brushes I like to use are really big brushes. Sometimes I use this one if it's a big piece of paper. Um, I like square brushes wherever it is. And then more um, pointed brushes. I like ones that come to a point like this. It's good to have a kind of a range of sizes. Like you want a really big one for washes. Like very very big. Because if you try to do a big wash with a small brush it's just going to get all blotchy. I can't find my square one, but I do use this one sometimes. It's kind of cool to get a wide variety of different sort of brush strokes. And also, you want to tape down your paper. I have this blue painter's tape and I'm going to tape it down. I'll actually define the border with it because I don't know exactly how I want it to be cropped yet. When you tape it down, it allows it, um, because when the paper absorbs water, it kind of buckles and this Taping it down allows it to dry flat rather than all warped. So, and also paper is really important. You gotta make sure you're using uh, watercolor paper or even mixed media paper. But if you like watercolor paper, is really like the paper is one of the most important things. I'm actually using the Arch or Arches or whoever you say it um, hot press paper just because I use it in school. It's just really reliable. It's expensive. <laughs> expensive for sure. You don't need something that nice, um, but I just like hot press paper now. I used to hate it. I used to, not hate it, but I used to think, no, I don't want smooth watercolor paper. I love the texture, but now I actually find it better to um, have that smooth surface. I think something with a little more texture than this would be perfect. But I don't mind the smoothness. I want to try the ar the arch or arches uh, cold press paper actually. I think I'm gonna go for an almost square composition. I'm actually using low tack pa painters tape, so I won't rip the the paint off. Um, just because that's the only thing I had. Um, but you can also just use like any tape and stick it to your clothes first, so that it doesn't rip the paper off. So I'm gonna start. I think I want this to have sort of a wintry theme to it. Um. I'm thinking like like orange and orange and purple are some of my favorite colors to work with, so I might do that. I might make the cat orange, make some purple foliage. I'll just see what happens. Usually I like to plan things out. I might use this area here to actually do some color tests first. And I want to show you my palette. It's a new palette. Um, I, I just got really sick of having small um, areas to mix. It's just hard to keep your colors clean, so I got this really big palette. I treated myself over the holidays and it's my favorite thing now. And the watercolors I use are, uh, I'll show you. They're pretty affordable and it comes with a lot. I use these PWC Extra Fine Artist watercolors. They're like Sinhan Art, Shinhan Art. Um, and I think most of the ones I use are that now because um, they're double the price from these, but there's more in it and they're better. So I use those. They're not like the best you can find, but they're they're pretty good mid-tier watercolor. Someone recommended them to me in the comments and I got it and I'm really glad that they told me about it. I like to keep one jar for dirty water and one jar for the cleaner water. And I want it to be um, kind of a teal. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow. color is this? Oh, that's green. Okay. Take a little bit of green. And I find the bigger puddles of water you leave, the more of an edge there is around your watercolor. So if you don't want that, keep that in mind. So I'm going to just start with a wash. Okay. 
And then I like to take some clear water and kind of bring the color down so there's no harsh edges. It's good to let the color kind of sit. Don't um, touch it too much after it's been laid down if you want it to be smooth. Because the more you mess with it, the more um, like blotchy and patchy it's going to look and it's just not always the best thing. So see how there's a lot of water there? I'll probably take some of that off because I don't want there to be too harsh of an edge. It's always handy to have a hair dryer near you as you uh, work because I don't want to wait for this to dry. <laughs> so I'm going to use a hair dryer. So I'm thinking it's going to be sort of a calico cat. So I'm just going to look up some references for what their markings look like. So I think I'm going to make half his face orange and I want it to be bright orange and something I shouldn't have done was let the blue go on his face because that's going to muddy the orange color because um, orange and blue are complementary. So I'm going to try to rub the color away like this with some water and blot it. Some paper lets you do this, some doesn't, some colors let you do this, some don't, but this side is starting to look a little bit less blue, so I'm gonna probably use that as the orange side. So I like to have bright colors, um, especially orange. I just really have been liking orange lately, like orange mixed with other things. That's too much of a tangerine, I think, so I'm gonna mix some red in there. Oh, that's too red now. Okay, this is always the struggle, but it's so easy to mix um, watercolor because water mixes really well. Okay, that's kind of a nice orange. So I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go in and map out where I want all the orange spots to be. And sometimes it's a good idea to have your warm colors um, on the areas that are closer to the viewer because it just helps with the depth. So that's why I put orange on this side of the face because it stands out more than the, than the black will, but I'm gonna make the black more of a purpley black, so. It'll go with the color theme. What do their tummies look like? Their tummies are pretty white. I just said tummy instead of stomach and I didn't even, didn't even think about it. Okay, and something else I wanted to do was add some orange leaves in the background. So I'm just gonna do it kind of loosely. Um, just to bring in Okay, time to work on the bushes. I want to go in with some really dark darks in the foreground to kind of help frame it. So I'm going to get out my royal blue, which is a beautiful dark color. It's one of my favorites. So I'm going to try to make some. Okay, already that's not dark enough. I like doing these like swirly sort of foliage thing. I've been playing with like more geometric um, foliage. Okay, I'm gonna make more of a purpley color and start going into the ones in the background. Oh wow, that red is so saturated. Every time I mix the red in, it's just instantly red. And clean, clean colors is important, um, especially with watercolor where everything can get muddy really, really fast. So it's, you want to keep a clean brush and mix a lot of paint so that um, it's just a... Because like the more paint you mix, the cleaner the color will be because it's um, diluting out whatever dirty water you could have had. Actually, with watercolor, that's different, I think. Because like acrylic paint, the more you mix, the less muddy it will be because there's less of that muddy paint water. Okay, so I probably want to let that dry. Might use my blow dryer for that. The one thing you have to be careful with with hair dryers is it pushes the color around because it's blasting air onto it. So you want to make sure it's not going to like push it into an area you don't want the color to be. But um, I'm careful. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to use this blue um, for his black markings because it kind of will help tie it together. And I don't want to use pure black, obviously. <laughs> I'm going to try to use it to sort of outline certain parts. Because I don't have a lineless style, I really like to embrace um, lines and disappearing lines. It's just 
part of my art and I'm trying to embrace that rather than do a, a line list style because I think that's somehow like makes you a better artist and it def and it doesn't and that's just how my brain um thinks sometimes like if I have to put lines it's like you failed but no like drawing is lines like you can't it's not a bad thing <laughs> I also usually can't just do watercolor I have to put some pencil in um just to bring some activity back to it because sometimes the brush strokes can kind of even though they can be really expressive, they can also get make it really stiff if you're trying to be too careful. I don't know what color I want the scarf to be. Probably a nice brown, like a tan color with like stripes maybe. That would be nice. I need to do some um, more shadows on the cat, so I might go in with some blue-ish, purplish color and do that. I think I want the scarf to be that yellowish sort of tan color. Switch to my bigger brush for the foreground. Might detail the trees a little bit back here. I think the bushes need some kind of red on them, I think. Like a pink color or something, some light wash. Just on the ones that are closer will be warmer and I think the ones in the back will be bluer and that will kind of help the depth a little bit because it just looked like one bush block and I think it would look better like this. This left a little bit of an edge that I don't want, so I'll try to get rid of that. Okay, so now some areas need to be darker, it needs more detail. In some places I might go in with pencil crayon, because um, that's a really big part of my workflow as much as I try to avoid it, I kind of have to use pencil crayon. It just helps me achieve the look I want and that's kind of what matters um, rather than limiting yourself to one supply I guess. Even though I would love to just be able to use watercolor but I can't so I'll have to use pencil. I like to do fast brush strokes or like purposeful ones like let the brush strokes sort of like be seen. I think the orange here needs a little bit of a shadow because it's just seeming a little too flat so I'm gonna add some depth. I feel like the scarf needs to be darker. Like it needs to be darker. So now that I have my base layer of watercolor, I'm gonna go in with some pencil and that always helps me kind of refine things. So I'm gonna keep my sharpener out and just go in with some pencil. And this, I usually have a holder for this, but I think I have a longer one of this color. I'll find it. Well, I guess it's gone, but it's okay. I'll just use the short one. 
but I don't like to make it obvious that I used pencil crayon. Um, I like to kind of press hard and use it as like lines rather than um, like color it in and stuff. Just like to put in detail where detail is necessary, make some edges a bit more clear. I don't know why I love orange and purple so much right now. I just think it's a really nice combination. Is it just me? What's your favorite color combination? Because right now mine is orange and purple. I just think like the purple accentuates or um, complements the orange really nicely. Because some people don't like orange. I don't think orange is one of the um, more liked colors. I think, and you never really hear people talk about um, liking orange the best. I think pencil is just really useful with watercolor. Um, even though a lot of people, I think a lot of people do this sort of method, um, but I don't know, it's just, it's because it works. <laughs> the pencil can just really help bring stuff out without um, being restricted by the water flow and the color and it drying lighter um, and all that stuff. My final tip is to take off the tape, um, but make sure it doesn't rip your paper. Using a hairdryer can help with this, but my tape is low tack, so it shouldn't rip anything off. Should be fine. I'm actually happy, happier um, with how this turned out than I thought it would, so I think I might make um, little prints of this for pre-order, so if you want to print, I'll link it in the description. You can grab one. They're going to be probably square prints, um, just like small little sort of like this size, I would say, um, like kind of postcard size, but not like, you know, horizontal, like it'll be a square one. I really hope you learned something from this or just enjoyed watching me paint and hear my process. I'll link all my supplies in the description so you can check that out and let me know if you drew something while watching this and what it is that you drew, because I'd love to, I'd love to know um, what you worked on while I worked on this. So uh, thanks so much for watching. This was a lot of fun and I'll see you in my next video.